Well, I just tried to catch a payloader hood as it fell on me. I lost. I was working on the payloader here. Um, yes, I am very foggy brained right now. I was welding the exhaust back together, climbing down to change some settings on the welder, and this big hood was sitting up by the welding helmet. I had set it up there last Friday, and on my way down, I grabbed that handle, thinking it was a good handle, and I came off backwards, and the whole hood came down after me, and I kind of moved out of the way, but the top of the stack came flinging around and literally stabbed me in the arm. Um, I don't know how. The tip of that did what it did, but it took like a picture taken, a blunt pen, like the bottom of a pen, and it shoved it down into my arm and moved all the skin and muscle, no fat, but just muscle, moved that to the side and gouged into me, not really slicing a ton, but just pushing in. And then I stood and looked at it and my arm was throbbing because it hit my bone so hard. And I looked, it was looking like a quarter inch or a half inch down into my arm. And the pain was unbearable. And I, this was a minute or so afterwards. I was then standing at the back of the payloader here. And next thing I knew, I woke up laying on the concrete. So I fainted, which I've never done before. I uh, woke up extremely nauseous. I did hit my head on the concrete when I fainted, but that doesn't hurt so bad. So I don't think I hit it too hard. Uh, and I went outside and full body sweats, um, nauseous, didn't puke, but yeah, I guess moral of the story, don't be dumb, don't take shortcuts and set a 150 pound hood where it can fall and do a lot worse damage than I did have to get four stitches. So we went into the hospital. And yeah, they patched me up. And it hurt a lot. But I did watch her stitch me back together. It was kind of weird. It was like it was in an old Western, except I had Novocaine. Back then, I think they just dumped some whiskey on it. But yeah. Put the heavy stuff on the ground right away. Because that could have been a lot worse. It tore. I don't know if you can see the tear in my sweatshirt. I had my sleeve down, and it cut right through that, obviously, on its way to my bone, which it must have gotten close to. Tendons are fine. Arm is okay. Really sore. Kind of got like a marble-sized bump on the back of it, too. So, yeah. I then finished my welding job. I'll show you guys that. So, yeah. I was standing up here, and I went like this. To get down, thinking I grabbed this handle. That hood was up here, and I grabbed its handle, which obviously it slid off. So, anyways, this is what I was welding on, which is really nice looking, but this whole pipe had completely busted off and was honing itself out, uh, bouncing around in there. So, we noticed that when we were doing some maintenance here. So, I was fixing that, because like on the excavator, we actually had to replace the whole thing. This one, the metal wasn't so shot, so I was able to weld it a little bit at a time until I could build up enough uh, metal to close the gap and hold it tight. We'll see how long that lasts, but it was $1,800 for a new muffler. This was a cheap fix. 
Otherwise, the last, well, last week and today prior to the mishap, I uh, have been working on this payloader, just doing the annual maintenance to it. Uh, this engine had an overhaul about 180 hours ago. We have changed the engine oil once since then, just to get the break-in oil out. They did install a Midland radio in this. Uh, it's one of the few pieces of equipment we don't have one on, which, yeah, they got CBs, but we're kind of phasing those out, or at least I would like to. I know Doug really likes them. Otherwise, normal stuff. Greased it, found a couple spots where the mud sliding underneath this. I don't know if it was this year. We didn't really have mud, but at some point, someone ran over a pile of dirt and busted off some a grease circ on the bottom, which a uh, little extractor tool got the old one out and threaded a new one in. Actually very surprised how easy that was. Usually that would be an hour job and then you just walk away and forget about it. Um, nothing major on this. No big oil changes. Uh, we do have a small, not that this really matters to you guys, so I'm not even going to talk about the differential leak because I wouldn't care if I wasn't working on it. This thing did get a ton of hours this year. I mean, 100 hours, but we used it a ton, so it feels like it should have more. And it survived a bin flying into it from across the yard this spring when we had those mini hurricanes come through. But she's just about ready. I'm waiting on a couple filters that I got to swap, and I need to get someone else to help put the hood back up there. Maybe should use a forklift this time. Uh, it came down pretty quick. I guess we're making jokes about it already. Also, I don't think anything broke except for the top of the stack. The top of the stack is dented in. And it's so thin, it's so thin due to exhaust that I can see daylight through it now. I told you guys, but I didn't tell any of them here. So we're just going to forget about that until they see it. Okay, I'm gonna go see what other people are doing. Fainting is weird. I don't know if you guys have fainted, but it is weird. I do not feel normal. And I have bowling league tonight. I probably should not go, but I really like bowling, so I probably will go. Well guys, I'm back. I'm halfway back anyways. I've been, uh actually away from the farm excuse my voice and my congestion but I've been just like laying on the couch wishing I was dying just uh, I got some horrible sickness just a bad bad cold more or less but I've been exiled from the farm they said I, I couldn't take I can't take laying around so uh, I said I gotta do something find me something to do so they said well don't Stay away from the farm. Just come get the fuel trailer and go sit in the excavator and disease pool that thing. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to go back over the threads and do some storm damage cleanup and just be my myself. But at least I can do something rather than sit on a couch. I might as well sit in an excavator and get something done. But still don't feel very great. Oh, I can see the work already. So what we need to do is we've let this project go on too long but there's so many projects from this storm that what do you do as you can see well maybe you can see because i can't see the tin's blowing off of this building uh mainly due to the fact that there is nothing left of the building and if we leave this in the windy winter day as you can see up there the tin's already flopping in the wind this whole end wall here Let's see if i can get the big trx over here fuel trailer's heavy as you can see, there's just debris laying everywhere. And if we leave this over the winter winds and storms, we could have a mess for a half a mile in the field. So along with four green bend foundations, um, we've talked about leaving the cement slab under this uh, building, which we might do just for parking stuff on. But we got to get that building tore down and not destroyed any longer well actually i'm going to destroy it worse but it's a heck of an eyesore and quite dangerous actually too so on my way to go get uh thunder thunder i'm not thinking the best like i'm still i think all fevered up in the head so bear with me guys i was on my way over here to the farm to get 
the fuel trailer and I stopped by and started this because all these hydraulics and everything really need to warm up and I'm just hoping we don't gel up. Oh, the booms froze down. Come on, there we go. So the idea here is we're running straight number two fuel at 16 degrees out so you very, very highly could risk the possibility of gelling up. But the idea is to bring warm fuel. The Thunder Creek's been sitting in the shop so it's 65 degree fuel. Dump that in the tank. Hopefully that prevents gelling. Haven't had a problem so far, but with that being said, I let it run for quite a while without uh, warm fuel in it. back in the warmth for a little bit Woo! I hate winter I hate it I like the hours I don't like the temperatures only what 40 50 40 more years and I can have a Florida house maybe okay did I put the fuel cap on no I did not good catch good catch we are pretty much full now I will not be filling on again tonight. Same theory, we want warm fuel going in or tonight or tomorrow morning. Still hasn't warmed up. We've only got two bars. It's been running for a half an hour. It's time to give her a load. The thing almost looks nicer behind that than it did by a green pickup. Finally got a car wash for it and I think it's maybe one of the worst car washes I've ever been through just as well used a garden hose. Oh, where to start? Now I know there's a bunch of underground wires somewhere around here, but there's no power up here anymore. And the gophers, for whatever reason, decided to eat up all the ground wi underground wires over here. That was a disappointing event. Where do we want to dig a hole? Warming it up. Whee! Going right. Unscrew the dizziness. So we got a big pile of trees that we got to burn here, and uh, Doug wanted to save the auger first. It was too close to the fire. Thought he might melt the uh, rubber off of this de-beaded tire here. So we're moving equipment. It's been there a long time, according to what I'm looking at, because the trees were growing up through it. Nothing. That is my pickup strap that Chet is wrecking. I think I'm going to need a. Yank them rope, chat. And if you guys need one, link will be in the description. They work a lot better than these old, these old Walmart straps. Mine doesn't have any stretch to it, and it's fraying quite a bit. So, gonna have to get decked out with a better thing. I feel like the tires aren't quite <laughs> what they used to be. They were worth saving. <laughs> It's cracked everywhere. Still holding air. You think we could fill the new bin with this? I was I was told it still works, but not on this farm. <laughs> well, there's no bins on this farm anyways anymore. I think actually what this was made or bought for was I think they shoved this in through the man doors, like oh. the manhole and then they shoveled the bends empty by hand into this. I'm not lying about that. I'm glad I don't have any recollection of that. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I'm glad we're young and strong, even though I'm injured. Okay, look at this, it is wrecked. 
Huh. Yep, gonna need a new strap. I need a s'more! This feels so nice. It's, and this is beautiful. This is very nice. Are you still sick? Yeah, that's why I'm downwind. Maybe you can burn the disease out of you. That's probably some medieval ritual. <laughs> and then if that don't work, they just stone you. Oh. I don't think I did anything wrong, sir. <laughs> witch! He's a witch! Brody! Hello. You ready to light the other one? Ice bowl. You ever seen an excavator runner a hay rake? Today's the day. Tell me you need a bigger excavator without telling me you need a bigger excavator. A guy and his toy He's having fun. Okay, Brody and I dropped off the bobcat. Uh, there's a lot of wood, splintered wood, where the ponds it used to be here. So we're gonna use a dirt bucket and try to clean the rest of this up, get the nails and whatnot for the most part cleaned up. And then the hole doesn't really work with his tooth bucket to scrape uh, all the detailed work here so we dropped it off for him because Brody and I we have another project should we go have fun with our own project yeah I don't want to stand here oh yeah no this sucks standing here we have a lift pump at one of our further northwest fields that we believe is frozen because there's no water so it hasn't been running so we're gonna go take it out so this is actually all trees that we hauled either from the farm or dad's place or Randy's or really anywhere around the country. We hauled with a dump cart massive piles from the storm. That is warm. So other fun fact, this is our other yard that just got totally annihilated. So. Any tree that's leaning out here all came from that storm. I mean, just uprooted, tipped over, broke off. There's not much left besides the buckthorn. All the nice trees got just destroyed by the tornado. Tornadic, tor la, 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 the tornadic action. Well, that's got a few hours of burning, no doubt, days of burning, but we did that so, um, while well, the excavator's here, uh, doing other jobs. It can restack the piles for a couple of days because it will burn for at least that. And uh, I'm heading back to start digging the hole or continue digging the hole for all this other debris. What's your opinion? Fast and aggressive or gentle and slow? Let's move into position. I'm thinking since the shed is supported, um, obviously against each side here, there is no straight walls. If I just go down the middle and tap it down, will it all just collapse? That's my hope. Ah, that is so satisfyingly enjoyable, amazing. I love wrecking stuff. expect it to come down on you guys oh well no harm no foul right you survived I survived everyone survived you want to go in <laughs> no <laughs> we are at our lift station uh, normally like last fall when it was extremely wet uh, going into winter 
there's enough water draining through all the tile in this field down into here that these will run throughout the whole winter uh, but there is we, we were so dry this year that there is water down there it's not frozen yet uh, it but it, it's gonna freeze this winter most likely so we're gonna take these pumps out and bring them back home uh, I suppose this spring we'll have to reinstall mm -hmm. for the, bring, the big snow melt. If we get any snow. We need a little bit, otherwise the frost is going to be very deep. So yeah, now we just got to get the cords out of the grass. And Brody's going to have to lift these because my arm is damaged. So I'm just here for moral support. I forgot about that. I kind of feel like Chet right now. I'm just going to hold the camera. Got to check for mice. Like or am I standing on the cord? <laughs> I'll get some tools. So you guys have probably seen these up close, but all we've done is got a pump and a pipe to get it to the surface. Um, yeah, they have their own float system, so when the water gets above them a little ways, they turn on, and once the water gets below that, guess what? She shuts off. But Hello? Now, do I recall, have I seen minnows down in here? I, I, I don't know. I hope I'm not making that up. I thought I did, which I don't understand because it's tile. We've got flying minnows that find their way into the tile. So, yeah, for those that don't know, the reason we have a lift pump here, uh, there is not enough grade to drain into an open ditch anywhere on this farm. So, I know there is... 12,000 feet of tile at least. Uh, this was tiled. Chet and Doug and Randy did this uh, before my time with them. But all of that drains down to here, which then has to get pumped to the surface. And it drains down the uh, road ditch here and, and goes to where the water is supposed to go down into a creek and stuff. Um, but this kind of setup, it's, it's, it's never what you want to do because now you have to have electricity. You gotta maintain your pumps. Um, obviously you'd rather just outlet to an open ditch uh, with your tile, but in this case, this is what they had to do. And it works great. These things pump thousands and thousands of gallons all year long, and it gets the water out of our field and gets it going downhill where it's supposed to go. So, a little spendy, but it was the only option. And uh, it's very necessary. It makes this farm, which this is, Oh, 240 acres here. Uh, it's turned the farm around. I know that. I don't even have to see the farm before there was tile in it. I've seen what tile does in other fields. The reason we do the work of putting it in, it allows us to get into the field earlier and to farm it, honestly, more successfully. Just be able to get a crop out of it, have more even planting conditions and everything else that comes along with being able to properly drain your field. Well, we were leaving that uh, lift pump and found a spot where a lot of trash got drug up by uh, fall tillage here. So Brody and I decided to start burning. Um, it ain't much, but it's a good day for burning. I do wish we had a little more wind. It's not really taking off, but this will cause issues plugging with the uh, digger in the spring. And since this is on the headland, I know we don't like to double pass too much with diggers in the spring because you just end up bringing up wet clumps of mud which cause issues in this heavy gumbo, unforgiving soil. So to prevent uh, Randy or someone else who's running the spring digger from having to try to spread this pile around in the spring, we're just going to burn her now. 
It's a lot less exciting than the other fire though. Well, I finished up my hole. Eric is uh, covering it up now with the skid loader. So now comes the time of the night, it's starting to get dark and time to restack piles. So obviously this one ain't an inferno anymore. We've restacked or I have restacked any of the loose branches that weren't in the main fire. That'll burn down overnight. I'll come in the morning, restack it, so on and so forth, till literally it's nothing but ash. And then you bury that. This one's a little, don't ride very smooth on the frost. This one's got a lot more bigger trees in it, so this will need more attention to. But this one's still burning really nice, as you can see. Alrighty, I think that's gonna be a wrap on the day. I'm shot. Shouldn't be this tired from literally just sitting and running sticks, but this cold is something else. Oh, so off to the farm and we'll see you guys in the next video. Appreciate it.